I thought we can start with the dance first that we worked on. Yeah, the one with the two girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tom Malone, one of the organizers of React Next 2016 conference. Here with me is Michelle Westrate, author of Mobix. I would like to thank our friends um, Robert and Michelle for, from React Amsterdam for helping us, uh, hosting us for this interview. And you will introduce yourself much better than I can. So tell us something about you that nobody knows. Yeah, so probably most people know me now for my work on my MobX. Uh, but actually there are a lot more things I like than just writing software. So also I like to work with my heads and uh, make my own furniture. So in two words, tell us about MobX. Yeah, so MobX is a uh, state management library uh, which makes state management really easy to do. So it helps you to focus on um, the essential, part, essential parts of what you are writing in your uh, application. And I will be speaking at the React Next about how we uh, use it in a practice in uh, like a really large application and how it helps us uh, simplifying the developments uh, and writing code in such a way that every member that's added to our teams uh, really can grasp quickly what's going on. Okay, so MobX has been getting a lot of attention lately. How did your life change from that? Are you having a lot of girls running after you in the street? Well, luckily not. I already have three girls at home, <laughs> so that's uh, busy enough. Um, but I had uh, a lot of great opportunities to uh, do cool stuff which I didn't ever didn't do ever before. So like creating uh, egghead videos, speaking at conferences, uh, getting sponsored for things. It's, uh, so really like good cool. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, how do you promote your library, by the way? Can you have some suggestions for newcomers? I think the most important thing is that you find early adopters and share their enthusiasm because uh, I can write all the things I want about Mobix, about how cool it is. Um, but my testimonial, testimonial about that is rightfully not very believable because I've wrote the thing. So mm -hmm. of course I'm successful with it. You want to get other people's words out? So exactly. To attract it, it matters crowd. whether other people can grasp your concepts and become more predictive uh, at it. And when you see that, that's also energizing for yourself because you see what people are capable of doing with a library, and that feels really uh, amazing. Nice. So now you're a lot more active in the open source community. How do you find the open source business? Is it grateful, ungrateful? I think the important thing uh, about writing open source is that you don't uh, expect anything from it, and that you don't find yourself to uh, that you don't feel obliged to do too much things. I mean, you share your code, and that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And if you don't expect uh, that everybody accepts your way of working or something like that, then it's a very grateful business, I think, because you help people, and they are, those are happy with it. And that's great. Yeah, it's great. MobX is written with uh, reactive principles in mind, actually transparent reactive programming, that's right. And um, do you think that the average developer can do reactive programming easily? Uh, I lost, since a few years, there has been a lot of confusing about what reactive programming is. So okay. when you nowadays talk about reactive programming, the first thing that pops into people's minds is RxJS and working with uh, yeah, streams and events. Definitely. But reactive programming is a lot broader than that. Um, so Mobex takes a completely different approach uh, on reactive programming. It's more like spreadsheets, and everybody understands spreadsheets. So what reactive programming is really about is um, about writing code that still holds in the future. Okay. So code that keeps relations in, uh, yeah. in text. Mm -hmm. So it's something that is continuous and progresses with, as time progresses. Exactly. So you write code for a certain moment in time, and it still uh, keeps all its invariants and all its constraints in the future. And when you use Mobix, it really looks like old-fashioned, almost boring codes you have written uh, always, except that you don't worry about how will this be invalidated in the future. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, I actually believe that writing React with Mobix is simpler than just writing React applications. So when you ask me, can everybody 
uh, do React programming, then I would definitely say yes. Yeah, okay. Everybody good. can do that. Good. Let's say tomorrow you quit doing front end and you quit programming. How will you make a living? What would you do with your life? Oh, I think I uh, would go uh, into uh, engine engineering or uh, furniture manufacturing or something like that. At least These are funny. very different things. How do yes. you connect them? Yes. Well, I, um, I grew up in a family which had a, a company in uh, mechanical engineering. So I grew up uh, working with engines and uh, mm. I still uh, like to uh, work with my hands in my free time, like making my own furniture. Uh, and then walk by at the end of the day and see this is what I built today. That yeah. I built today. I know that feeling. And that you don't have a software; you just have this list of commits. It's it's <laughs> still a bit abstract. You don't see it anymore. What kind of tomorrow. furniture are you making? Um, mostly uh, closets, uh, but g generally I do a lot around the house. We uh, recently decorated our uh, attic, for example. What do you think has more value in software development? Is it Pragmatism or purism? Do we need to stick to an ideal goal of how our code should be like, or do we need to find? Uh, do we need to, to make like a tool, the right tool for the job, a solution that's specific to what we need to deliver? I think in general, pragmatism is a uh, more important trait than purism, and the exception to that is testing. I think. Okay. But pragmatism. Uh, is what you uh, get paid for it, and what helps also helps you to learn uh, the fastest, I believe. I mean, we usually we are not able to build a software system completely right, right uh, at once. And we always have to iterate. We always have to iterate, yeah. and we find uh, better abstractions once we are busy with it. And even if we were able to build it right the first time, probably. We can't because the business doesn't allow us to be at the ideal architecture in version one. They want to sell and they want to do that quickly to have the return of investment. Mm -hmm. So you have to have this ideal architecture in mind, but you have to think in steps towards the goal and think in deliverable steps uh, of reaching that goal. And I think in practice that pragmatism and experience to don't make uh, spaghetti code mm -hmm. are more important than being really pure about what a textbook code would look like. Okay. Do you think that we actually need dramas in the world of JavaScript to evolve? Like we had Leftpad and we had IOJS uh, fork that was really uh, ground shaking in, in our community. Do we really need them to grow? As an, as an ecosystem? I think um, you're working with uh, open source systems, so it's always uh, a people thing as well, it's just not a technical yeah. problem. People are very passionate too. People are passionate, and uh, so you will kind of uh, have these dramas always in a community like this. And I think we shouldn't be too worried about it. Okay. I mean, in practice, those issues are usually quite uh, resolved quite quickly. Yeah, that's true. The left pad business only cost us a couple of minutes at work. It wasn't that big of a deal. Yes, and it brought the right questions up, and that's a great thing. And uh, I think that's the, the concept of evolution, that something breaks, and you'll have to think about uh, how to do it better next time. That's, that's true. That's just learning about. That's true. By the way, who do you think is going to win the front-end wars? It's going to be React, it's going to be Angular, it's going to be Polymer. Who's going to be? I don't think it's Polymer. Although I'm not that much into chemistry, um, and with React or Angular, it's hard to say. Um, Angular has the appealing thing that it has all the things in one package, similar to so, Mobex, actually. Yes, maybe a bit similar to Mobex. So if you build something with which isn't too complicated, then I think Angular is uh, might be the right tool for the job if you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, when you have a large, long-running project where eventually you will need to get your hands dirty. I think then React has the right level of abstraction where you can intervene at any point where you ever need. And I think if you uh, combine React with MobX, it's uh, even easier to learn than just React alone or Angular alone. 
So, Michelle, you will be coming to Israel for React Next 2016 in September. How do you imagine your visit to Israel to be like? I think I will uh, be having a, a great time. I spent a lot of time lately uh, on Mobex. And uh, of course, my uh, wife sometimes thinks, why do you spend this much time on Mobex? And then I said, well, I was invited to Israel, and now she's completely OK with it. <laughs> so uh, she's going to join. And uh, I think we, uh, we're going to enjoy big time. And I'm also uh, hoping to uh, meet a lot of uh, people in the community and also Mobex users and hear about their experience. You should prepare yourself because people are going to be asking you very serious questions. Oh, that's cool. It's totally cool. Right. Welcome. And uh, I'll see you in uh, Tel Aviv. Thank you for watching us. If you want to meet Michelle, if you want to learn more about Mobex, join us at React Next 2016 in Tel Aviv, September 15th. First of all, thank you to our friends at React Amsterdam for hosting us here and helping us uh, make this interview happen. Thank you for watching.